If you're going to live in Peru, you should know about the food. Now you've probably seen there are a lot of Peruvian restaurants, maybe even in your town, but there is a big problem with the food in Peru, and I'm going to tell you about it. So if you've seen all these Peruvian restaurants, maybe you're curious. I don't know if you've tried, but if you're planning on going to live there or just visit, you should know about some of the aspects of their food and what to expect. They eat guinea pigs. Uh, yeah, they, um, it's, a, spe it's a, a specialty, you know, it's a delicacy. They don't eat them every day. They eat them on special occasions, but many people, uh, especially in the South, they have flat roof how flat roofed houses because it doesn't rain very much or at all so they don't have to have a um, peak on their house they're flat and they even use it like almost like a patio or they have their washing machine up there they dry their clothes up there or just go up there like a patio to go look around look out at the city because you have a nice view from the top of your house but they might also have uh, cages up there with guinea pigs and so you can hear them sometimes. They make a funny little noise. Uh, I really can't imitate it, but you can probably go on a video and hear what guinea, pig, guinea pigs sound like. And then um, on special occasions, they take them and they eat them. Uh, they usually fry them up. They skin them and then they, uh, or they take all their fur off somehow. I don't know because I don't eat, I eat kosher. So if you don't, if you eat kosher, you're not going to, you're, it's still good to know it because somebody might offer you some guinea pig. The way you say it in Peru is cuy. It's spelled C-U-Y and it's pronounced cuy. That's not the typical way to say guinea pig in Spanish. In standard Spanish, it's conejillo de indias. Like little, literally, little rabbit of the Indies. Um, but, uh, so it's, it's easier to say in Peru, I guess. Cuy. Uh, and they do a specialty called cuy chactalo. Chactalo just means like smashed down. And what they do is, they've explained it to me, they take the, um, the whole guinea pig and they put it in a cast iron frying pan. They put a brick on top or some type of weight and they cook it and it gets flattened out and cooked and they, then they turn it over. Now you can get chicken cooked the same way and I've had it and it's really good. Um, you can get chicken cooked the same way. Pollo chactalo. Uh, but anyway, that's one of the things they eat. Another one is ceviche. You've probably heard of that. Um, the ceviche is just fish uh, broken up into little pieces, and then they put lemon on it. And the acid in the lemon makes the fish go from being, you know, translucent, the way fish is, to opaque and white and looks cooked. Uh, and it is cooked. I've eaten it many times. And... Um, you need to know which it is because, again, some of it is not kosher. The one that is definitely kosher is lenguado, L-E-N-G-U-A-D-O, and that's flounder. Uh, and it's really delicious. Uh, you can get that ceviche made that way. Uh, that's a good one. Um, the, uh, the other main dish in Peru is uh, called rocoto relleno. Rocoto is like a bell pepper, but it's spicy and it's hot. Um, some of them are hotter than others, and there it could be red, yellow, green, the color doesn't matter. Um, and they stuff them. Relleno means stuffed. So they stuff the bell peppers with like beef and corn and then some other vegetables and maybe some rice. It's a really good dish. That's the only spicy dish. The ceviche can be spicy if you put hot pepper on it. They'll serve hot pepper on the side and you decide if you want to put it on it or not. But you don't have to. The rocotto is most likely going to be spicy, but for some, if you're really into spicy food, it won't be too hot for you. You'll probably just enjoy it because uh, I I really liked rocotto. I had those like every week. Um, another thing I want to talk about before I tell you the problem with the food in Peru is um, so when you go to Peru, it's really important to know what a picanteria is. Picanteria is a type of restaurant, and it's the Typical, traditional restaurant where you get a great meal. It's where all the locals go. But you can go there as a tourist too, obviously, or, you know, if you're living there. Uh, you need to find out. And there's good picanterias, average, and bad ones. The picanterias is where you're going to get the really good food. And the other thing is it will be less expensive. It'll be a good price. That's the other good thing about the food in Peru. You will pay about a quarter of what you might pay in the States, and it's going to taste 
probably four times better than what you'll get in the States because even though they're Peruvians, they can't get the same ingredients um, the way they can in, the, in Peru. Uh, but definitely go to a picanteria to eat. Uh, there's lots of other types of restaurants too. But these are the traditional restaurants. It might just look like almost like somebody's house with the name of a restaurant on the front. Uh, you never know what to expect. But in the picanteria, expect to get uh, some of the peculiarities are that they have the soup of the day. So each day, but each day of the week, it's one specific soup. And it's the same soup every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every week they serve the same soup on that day of the week. So they'll even, the soups have names like minestrone or whatever it's called, right? But they'll also just call it Tuesday soup, Wednesday soup, you know, sopa de martes, sopa de miércoles. And that's, you can always expect it. But there's one soup that they will serve almost every day in all of the picanterias. And that is the Sunday soup. That's the caldo blanco. Caldo means broth and blanco is white, right? So white broth. But it's... That sounds kind of plain and it is not. The reason they serve it every day is it's delicious and it's very popular. It has potatoes and yuca and other things in it. And one of the other things it has in it, and like beef, usually beef. One of the other things it has in it is something called chuño. And I want to explain this to you because a lot of Americans wind up not liking chuño. And I, I loved it. Um, I think it's because they're told what it is. It's dehydrated potatoes. They take the potatoes up in the high in the Andes Mountains and they put them in a, they've explained it to me how they do it. They put them in a burlap bag and then they let them wash in the river. Like they tie the bag so it's secure, but then the water of the river, the river water just washes them for I don't know how long, a day or days or hours. And then they take them out and they either peel them or they leave them with the skin on and they'll have two different results at the time. This is called junio. And then they leave the potatoes out on the rocks and they just let the dry air dehydrate them. Peru is that dry in the south. It's almost like you're living in a dehydrator. You need to always be carrying around a bottle of water with you or chewing some gum. You'll get thirsty. Uh, but it's not really hot. So uh, they put the potatoes out. They dehydrate um, on their own. And then they, um, and they get light. Because imagine you take a potato and take all the moisture out of it. What's left? it's like nothing and they're really light and they get really small you'll see them in the market they look like these just like a uh, like honey i shrunk the kids but it's the potatoes and so the a big potato just comes down to like this big now the mistake is that americans think oh they're gonna they take these and they either break them up or put them in small pieces or bigger pieces into soup and they think they get rehydrated so then it should become a potato again but it doesn't and that's why it's not called papa potato it's called junio and it should have its own name because when it's put back into the soup imagine you're taking all that starchy liquid out of a potato it's washed out and then it's dehydrated out the potato is different now it has the kind of the structure of it but the even when it's cooked in the soup and it becomes soft and rehydrated it doesn't taste like a potato. It doesn't feel like a potato. It has a different texture and a different taste. And try to appreciate chuño for what chuño is. It will not taste like a potato anymore. It's going to be like chewier. It's kind of chewier. And that's it. Most Americans don't like it. I thought it was really good. And there's there's chuño blanco and chucho, chuño negro. And that just means they either peeled it or they left the skin on. The skin on and it winds up looking black. But it tastes really good too. Some people say it has more vitamins and stuff. Um, you should know this in the picanteria first they serve the soup and the soup is going to be filled to the brim and you're thinking oh this they're crazy they're filled it up too high it's gonna spill on me but they usually don't <laughs> I never saw them spill it but they just they feel like they have to give you a really full bowl and it's a lot of food and it will have big pieces of vegetables and whatever in it that you ordered and then after that comes the segundo the second the second dish we would think that's, you know, the main dish, and it is. But in Peru, it's the soup that people go for. That's the really the main thing that people want and are expecting at lunch. And then the segundo will be like a piece of meat and maybe some french fries and some salad or something like that. But it's usually an afterthought. It's never as good as the soup was. So you'll see what I mean. It depends what you order, though, of course. There are some main dishes that are not soup. You can go to a restaurant and not have soup. It's the picanterias that always have a soup 
and then that, and then maybe even a little dessert and a drink included. Speaking of drinks, there are two drinks that you should know about in southern Peru. They're both called chicha, and chicha, just uh, C-H-I-C-H-A, chicha, just is a, a drink made of corn, um, and usually like a purplish corn. Uh, there's two, though. There's chicha de jora, J-O-R-A, and there's chicha morada. Morada means purple. So the chicha morada is just like a soft drink. It's, um, it's delicious. You can't describe it. You just have to taste it. You know, how would you describe orange juice or, uh, I don't know, any, any drink? How do you describe a flavor? You just have to try it. It's absolutely delicious. They cook the purple corn. It, it's really dark purple, this drink. It almost looks like a glass of wine, but it's not. Chicha de chicha morada. So that's um, a soft drink. That's really nice. But then chicha de jora is made with purple corn, but for some reason it's different and it comes out a lighter, like a pink color. That one's fermented. And it's more like if you had to put it in a family of drinks, it's more like a beer. But it doesn't taste like beer. It doesn't taste like wine. It tastes like chicha de jora. But it's more in the beer family and you definitely can get drunk from it. So that one, but I mean, one glass is fine. And usually they serve that at the picanterias with lunch. And a lot of times it's included or you can ask for it. But I definitely recommend trying that, both of them. They're fantastic. The, the, the flavor is uh, it's out of this world. Um, okay, there are, there are like hundreds of types of potatoes in Peru. And the Peruvian's very proud to tell you that. But there's basically about 17 different varieties of potatoes, which is still a lot, right? Um, up and down the, the coast, the, all over the country that you'll typically see. But I would say that in any single one um, vegetable market, and there's lots of open air vegetable markets, you know, they're roofed, but they're kind of outside, you're going to find about 10 seven to ten varieties of potatoes and they're really interesting looking little tiny potatoes that are really bright yellow inside others that are like spiraled white and purple or white and red or pink and then um just other ones that are uh white or yellow um mostly whitish and they'll tell you oh this one's good for soup this one's good for french fries this one's good for some other way uh, but yeah a lot of potatoes in peru definitely uh so now, what's the problem with the food in Peru? The problem with the food in Peru, as you could probably have guessed, is that every week that you're living there, you're going to discover something new somewhere if you're open-minded and you keep trying. And you're going to love it, and you're going to have difficulty controlling your waistline. You can gain so much weight in Peru because the food is just so delicious. That was my experience. And it's things you don't expect, like in some of their bakeries, and their supermarkets, they have like this, this uh, hybrid between a roll and a croissant. It's not really a croissant or a roll. It's like half and half. And they're so addictive. Um, they, their sweet foods, their desserts, their main dishes, their soups, all of their different lunches and their drinks. I, obviously, you can see I highly recommend the food in Peru. Uh, and that's only in the south. And it's the same way when I've traveled on vacation to other parts of Peru, the food was also really good. Anyway, bon appetit. Or as they say in Spanish, buen provecho. <laughs>